Today we're sitting with Barry Magui, the president of the IF, IAFF, correct? Yes, Local 628. 628, he's the president. Well, Barry, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Barry, the reason why we're sitting here today is because of the proposed budget that will affect the city of Yonkers in a way that it's uh, hysterical. We'll put the citizens of Yonkers in harm's way at many levels first resp responders, public services, in many ways. Now, uh, we've been hearing this thing over and over. Every year, basically, we have the same issue. What, why do you think that this time around, it's real? Well, it goes back for generations where Yonkers has had fiscal problems year after year after year. This is not something new, and no one should be shocked by this. Um, you know, we have a horrific budget situation this year We're talking about 200 layoffs on the city side as well as 200 cities on the 200 layoffs on the board of education side so that's 400 people that's 400 families that are affected and just as importantly there's 200,000 residents of the city of Yonkers that are going to be very negatively affected by these cuts as well that's cuts to our fire police sanitation and education all of these departments will be decimated if these cuts go through well, layoffs is never a good thing, but there is certain layoffs that we can live with and there is others that we cannot live with. Police and fire department, those are the first responders. Those are the ones that keeps us alive and safe. Uh, for the lack of a better term, how would you word it in a way that people of Yonkers can see and understand that this time around it's not a bluff? it might actually happen. Well, it's, you know, unfortunately the, the budget in Yonkers is, is never very open and they always seem to overinflate the problem and then come up with a solution, um, which is nowhere near what they said the problem was. Uh, we just saw recently a controller's report um, that indicated that there wasn't very good transparency in the city's budget for many years. Uh, and this is one of the problems the unions face. Um, it, it's it's sad that we can't sit down and actually believe what we're being told um, by the administration. We're going to be meeting with the uh, city council in the coming weeks to discuss the budget with them and the ramifications. I can just tell you, in the fire service, you know, we save lives. That's our job is to save lives, and the second part of our job is to save property. Everybody, you know yourself what it. You've been to many fire scenes, and anybody who wants to go to Yonkers Voice Central will see. We'll see countless videos of fire scenes. Um, you know how labor intensive it is um, to put out a fire. And more importantly is to extinguish a fire or contain it before it expands to the whole building. Uh, you've been on scene while Yonkers firefighters have saved people's lives and helped get them out of buildings that were on fire. You were just at Saratoga Avenue, I think two weeks ago, or down by Radford Street. Um, we have a fire almost every day in the city of Yonkers, and because we have the manpower and the personnel, an adequate number, most of those fires are contained. Most of those fires are contained to the room of origin, and sometimes to the appliance of origin. Uh, we have stove fires, we have dryer fires, uh, kitchen fires, we have uh, fires in bedrooms, we have electrical uh, fires. And most of the time we get there in a reasonable period of time, and we're able to extinguish those fires and not only save people's lives, but save their property. Having a fire is a devastating uh, tragedy to befall any person. You don't realize how precious your belongings are until you lose them. Photographs of your grandmother or uh, keepsakes from your mother. So, you know, saving property is a big part of our job. But life saving is number one. And when you talk about the fire department in the city of Yonkers, you can't just think about fires. We do much more than just fires. We're first responders for medical calls. Um, if anybody's having a heart attack or a stroke, anybody who has an elderly parent that lives with them or a senior citizen, someone who has young children, the number of calls we go for children choking, allergic reactions are big, uh, strokes, heart attacks, you name it, um, we're there, we're there within a three to five minute window that you need to be there to save people's lives. We have one of the highest resuscitation rates uh, in the country because we have a good response. That, w that means when we, have, we go to, to a scene, someone's having cardiac arrest, um, every year we average between 30 and 40 instances where we can resuscitate that person and get uh, breathing ongoing again. 
Whether or not they ultimately survive is a different story. But if we're there in six to seven minutes, there's no resuscitation. The person is dead. It's you know the equivalent of, of drowning in a pool. You only have a few minutes where your brain can survive without oxygen. And once your heart shuts down, you can't breathe. And then your body shuts down. And that's why people become unconscious. It's the body's natural uh, reaction to lack of oxygen. It shut down as many organs as possible. And at a certain point, you just die. So when we talk about the fire department, it's not just about fires, although fires are a big part of what we do. Uh, we're lifesavers, and we, we save a tremendous amount of lives in the city of Yonkers and a tremendous amount of property. Um, and these cuts would be devastating. Yes, I've been there. I've seen how you guys work, and uh, I can vouch for that. You work extremely hard, and you do save lives at many levels. Now, um, Barry, I have read, you know, somewhere that you have made suggestions to the city hall about how to solve or help solve this problem. Some some of the suggestions have been implemented, and many have not. Can you, you know, uh, articulate in what suggestions have those been, you know, have those been, and uh, what they did not accept or implemented? Well, it's, it's very hard in a very short interview to go into specifics of any in uh, general. nature. But one of the things I suggested when this mayor first took office was to go after the, the uh, property owners who hadn't paid taxes. And in some cases, 15, 20 years. And no action had ever been done. And the mayor actually, although we have our differences, actually credits me um, with that because they started bringing in REM foreclosures for properties that were taxes hadn't been, ongoing businesses, restaurants that just had failed to pay their property taxes for years. Um, and we're still ongoing open businesses. And it was a slap in the face to every um, taxpayer in the city of Yonkers. So that's just one idea. There's some other operational um, components throughout the city. You know, one of my uh, biggest pet peeves is the amount of uh, tax abatements and giveaways that are given to developers in the city of Yonkers. You know, now, you know, we've, we've gone past the point where nobody wants to invest in Yonkers. There's investment all over the city of Yonkers, and they're still giving the incentives to developers to come in. Those are no longer necessary. And even though the administration wants to tout that they're, well, they're smaller, they're, they're shorter in time than they used to be. Well, years ago, they would give 25 or 30 year tax abatements. Now they're giving for 10 or 15 years. That's still too long because we need those revenues to fund our schools, to put police on the street, and to keep firefighters responding to life-threatening emergencies. Now, if this layoff is to be implemented, if the budget is to be, I'm sorry, the budget is to be implemented and uh, the layoffs become effective, how many people will you lose? Well, we're told that 30, 30 firefighters would be laid off and an additional 30 fire, fire officers would be demoted. Mm-hmm. So it would affect, you know, 60, 60 members of the fire department, 60 families in the fire department. These will impact greatly oh, the yes. fire department Significant and, the people, impact. Right. and the people of Yonkers. And along with the closure of five or six fire companies which is, uh, in this day and age, it's almost outrageous to even utter those words, but those are the types of words that are being uttered, five or six fire companies. And we've asked the mayor to identify to the council which, which of those fire companies will be closed. Will it be the one on Central Park Avenue or the one on Kimball Avenue? Will it be on Bark Street or Radford Street? Uh, will it be on Sawmiller Road or in Shawna Terrace? Because I think that's critically important for the members of the city council to know what those cuts are going to mean to their communities they represent. So I guess the firehouse number one in Gary Square is now becomes, goes to the back burner. Well, they, you know, they, that's, that's a part of our critical infrastructure uh, for the city of Yonkers. That should have been built already. It's unconscionable that they've let that go so long. Um, and it's going at a snail's pace. And we're expecting that to be completed because these budget uh, deficits in the city of Yonkers or blips in time. And we have to plan for the future, just as we have to continue to buy uh, garbage trucks and police cars and fire trucks uh, for long-term capital assets. A city cannot survive without an infrastructure. And that state firehouse station one is a critical part of this city's infrastructure. And it's a tragedy waiting to occur. But Barry, if there is no money, there is no money. There's always money. You know, that's, that's the thing. It's how you spend the money. It's how you manage the money. And there has been an awful lot of mismanagement and uh, money being spent for the non-critical uh, purposes in the city of Yonkers. There's what we have is the rec- what are those the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. Well, the fire department is a must-have because without the fire department, there'll be loss of life and tremendous loss of property. And then who'd want to come in to develop to, to build in Yonkers 
if you don't have an adequate fire department, if you don't have an adequate police department, if you don't have adequate schools. Now, must have and nice to have. Give us an example of something that the city have that was just nice to have, not the must have. Well, almost in every department, it seems that there's a lot of nice to haves. And they have you know, we must have corporation counsel. We have to have lawyers that are going to represent the city in litigation, in development projects. But then we also have all these outside counsel, uh, where the city hires law firms at exorbitant rates um, to represent the city, in addition to our corporation counsel. That's one of the ways that we should be streamlining business, become more efficient. Um, we should have our corporation counsel doing more of the work. Labor counsel, for example, an to the tune of millions of dollars have been expended for labor counsel to basically uh, negotiate contracts with the, with the unions, handle grievances, arbitrations, uh, disciplinary matters. That's what a city does. Any municipality does that. So in the city of Yonkers, instead of having an adequate person in corporation counsel who can do that, because it's a significant uh, job function of the city, they hire outside counsel. Um, you know, and right now they're utilizing a law firm from Binghamton, New York, that charges them to travel down to Binghamton, New York, to Yonkers, and sometimes down to Perb, which is in Brooklyn. When we, we have adequate and capable people in on staff in the city of Yonkers, uh, in Corporation Council's office, that could do that. And if they don't, well, then they should recruit somebody who can and save uh, a significant amount of money. Now, Barry, if you had the mayor sitting down here with you across the table, what would your suggestion be to him to prevent this... Uh, these layoffs from occurring in the city of Yonkers? Well, I've been saying this for, for many years, that we should be lobbying Albany. You know, when they, when they take their annual trip up to uh, Albany, right around budget time, and everybody goes to the million dollar staircase, and it's photo ops and selfies, and the politicians feel great after the one day, that's not going to get you anything. And as somebody posted on, I found it very comical, um, that all, all that makes the governor do is yawn. You know, what we have to do, we have to hit the ground running in Albany, and we have to lobby not only our local delegation, we have to go to the, del to the senators and the assembly people from all throughout the state and explain why Yonkers is in such dire straits, why we need some assistance, why we need additional funding, and maybe create alliances with the other cities. Instead of blaming everything on the fact that Buffalo gets more and Rochester gets more, well, I dare say that the mayors of those cities could use more funds, too because they're in much worse shape than Yonkers is. Um, so we should be building alliances with them and say, you know what, not only does Yonkers need more, but Rochester needs more too. Your schools deserve more. So let's form an alliance of the major cities outside of New York City, and let's try to actually work to get real recurring revenue to the city of Yonkers. That hasn't been done. It's all photo ops, and it's all for the press. Have a press release, we're going to lobby, and it's not occurring. And if it is occurring, it's not effective. Obviously, um, this has been a, a generational problem, and the, the techniques they've used in the past and in the currently are not working. We have to go with some new ideas of how are we going to effectively lobby for the city of Yonkers and get the funding that we deserve. Barry, is there anything that you would like to tell the people of Yonkers? Is there anything that the people of Yonkers should and can do to uh, speak with the mayor or you know, express the concern? What do you think they should do or can do? Well, I think the residents of Yonkers, you know, should be very concerned about what's occurring with this budget. We have these, these cuts to the fire department would be devastating. Lives will be lost. And if you have somebody who's uh, at risk in your home or in your neighborhood, elderly, uh, frail people, children, uh, that's going to be a very big problem when there's less firefighters to respond. Because when we have less firefighters, that increases our time to respond. And in our business, whether it's a medical emergency or a fire, time is the worst enemy. You have to get there, whether it's a small fire in the trash can. If you don't get there in a reasonable period of time, the whole building's gonna be in fire. If somebody has lost consciousness, as in cardiac arrest, if we're not there within five minutes, the loved ones will be burying that person a couple of days later. There's no question about it. And unfortunately, I will be able to prove every instance with empirical evidence uh, that the lives were lost and property is lost if these cuts go through. We do not want these cuts to go through. We don't want these cuts to go through in the police department, or in our schools, or our sanitation department. We're a growing city. Uh, we want to continue to grow, but as we grow, we have to we have to expand our tax base. 
we cannot continue to have the homeowners shoulder the burden without the developers paying their fair share, whether that's the racetrack, whether that's Ridge Hill, whether that's Stu Leonard's or Costco, any of the development that's going on the west side of the city, these projects must pay their fair share. And to date, they have not. They've been given the store away um, for whatever pur reasons and purposes, and how, we, how it can t the electorate allows it to continue is beyond me. We're 20 minutes from Midtown Manhattan, which is basically the center of the universe. These developers should be paying a premium for the, for the, to have the, the right uh, to build on our waterfront, the most beautiful part of the Hudson River, no matter where you go, and I've been all over the Hudson River, all up, up and down, it, we have a better view than they have in Manhattan. We have the Palisades, the glorious Palisades. We have Mr. Ginsburg, who just finished his uh, lux ultra-luxury uh, development on Upper Warburton Avenue. He has his own, his, his tenants will have their own private passageway to the Greystone train station. And he, he advertises that an ultra-luxury living experience. And yet he has gotten tax breaks and tax abatements the whole way through and will for many years to come. That has to end, and that has to end now. We have to start looking into our budget, finding efficiencies, working with our union unions and our labor leaders, not dictating to them, not just blowing smoke and mirrors for a photo, photo op for the news media, but actually sit down. We haven't had any substantive discussions with the mayor. Sure, have we had meetings? Yes. We had two meetings that lasted approximately an hour, and nothing of substance was discussed other than, you know, tell us something we don't know, that Yonkers has a budget shortfall. This is every year. Every year in Yonkers, it's the same old story. We don't have enough money. It's Albany's fault. They're not giving us enough funding. And yet our teachers are threatened with layoffs. Our firefighters are threatened with layoffs and demotions. Our police officers. You know, these are the people that have critical positions. We, we send our children, you know, half of their waking hours, we send them to schools. And in those schools, they don't have enough teachers. They don't have enough programs. They don't provide good lunches or meals. They don't have sports programs. And then we have our police officers who are asked to go out and, and to risk their lives for us. And they have to worry as to patrolling the streets at night, whether or not they're going to have a job in a few weeks. And the same thing with our firefighters that could be responding to a call right now, risking their lives to save others. Like these are, that's unconscionable to be putting the people that dedicate their lives to the city of Yonkers um, in turmoil every single year. Yes, and every single year there is this threat of layoffs, but somehow at the end things work out. You think this is nothing but a strategic uh, argument point, okay, instead of 35 or 35 men, we're going to lay off just 15 and you guys will settle for it? Well, that's fool's play. If that's the play, uh, that's just a fool because it's like the boy who cried wolf. Um, the city, we should, be, we should have 30 or 40 additional firefighters. We shouldn't be talking about laying off firefighters. We should be talking about expanding our fire department. To, you know, we haven't had an increase in the fire department in 40 years. It's been at these levels, although people want to complain about staffing levels and everything else, but it's basically 35 years, uh, almost 40 years, since there's been any increase, and that was after they had cut back in the 70s uh, because of the real significant uh, budget crisis Yonkers faced then. Same thing in our police department. We're expanding. There's other cities out there that have the same population as us, Rochester. They have many more police officers than Yonkers do. Uh, they have many more firefighters than Yonkers does. And those are shrinking cities. Well, Yonkers is an expanding city. I go to Rochester. I go to Syracuse. I've been to Buffalo three times this year. Um, and it's only in April. And I've been to Buffalo three times. The, the reality is Yonkers is, is, is in a construction boom. There's not many parcels of land that haven't been claimed to be built on. And, there, there's, and if there is uh, vacant land, there's plans to build on them. So we have to, just like everything else, if you're going to have a family and your family is going to get bigger, you have to actually expand the house or move to a new house. So Yonkers needs to expand its infrastructure, which is firehouses. I mean, we, we haven't built a firehouse in the city of Yonkers in 35 years. And we closed the one. And we've recently closed one, and we're waiting almost three years now for a replacement. The city of Buffalo had been in a control board. They built a new firehouse, each, each that one firehouse in each of the last four decades a city that was basically bankrupt because 
that's part of the infrastructure. No matter how bad things are, we have to maintain our police prisons, or they'll fall down. Um, we have to replace them. Police vehicles, yeah, we have police cars. They don't last very long. They're they're used twenty four seven. So no matter how bad the economy is, we have to replace our critical infrastructure. And one of the things when emergency services, part of your critical infrastructure is personnel. Because a police car with no police officers in it is useless. A firehouse with no firefighters in it is useless. And a fire truck. So the police department, emergency services, and the fire department are critical are parts of the critical infrastructure, the city anchors, and they must ma be maintained at all costs. Well, the city is expanding. There is no doubt about that. And the formula just doesn't match a city in expansion and a reduction on the manpower that will keep the city safe. Our people, our members on Yonkers Voice, you know, I've been talking about it. They, most of them cannot understand how is that formula syncs, you know, with the mayor. But uh, it is what it is in the sense of this is the proposal budget. Many people don't believe it will go through Barry, because of, you know, past history, you know, there is all these things going on, and when it comes time that, uh, you know, a solution is found. But now, just to end this interview, if, is there anything that I forgot to ask you and you'd like to mention to the, to the citizens of Yonkers and residents of Yonkers so they can uh, take steps to uh, probably call the mayor, show up at the council meeting? Is there anything they can do? Well, I think at this point, the mayor's proposed his budget. So it is what it is. Uh, you know, I find it ironic that the mayor proposes a budget which he doesn't even want adopted. Uh, he, he, he's hoping that the city council will make adjustments and modifications to that budget. Uh, but he's the chief executive. He, uh, he should be proposing a budget that he's asking the city council to adopt. It's, it's like upside down in York is what happens. So we have a mayor that's proposed a budget that he doesn't want the city council to adopt. He wants them to be the leaders and to tackle these tough questions. And some of it's got to be revenue generating. And it's unfortunate that that generally means tax increases. But, you know, that's what we have to do. If we're not getting the revenue from developers and from our commercial side of the city, the homeowners are going to pick up the tab. That's the reality. And it becomes a game of a political gamesmanship um, of who's going to do it and who's going to get the blame for proposing to, to increase taxes. Because the reality is we're not laying off 70 police officers. It would be impossible in the city of Yonkers. We're not going to lay off 30 firefighters and close five or six firehouses. That would be impossible. It would be devastating. There would be an immediate impact in both of those instances if those cuts as they're planned go through. And even to a lesser extent, in the police department, you know, we talk about overtime in the police and the fire department because we don't have enough personnel to begin with to adequately staff either department. So you incur overtime costs. And then they turn around and blame the workers who missed Mother's Day and Father's Day and Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter because emergency services are 24 hours a day. So those people that work and get paid overtime are blamed because the city didn't want to actually do what it had an obligation to do, which is to fully staff these emergency service departments. And from the fire department, we're just tired of it. It's like, how many years can you go through this? You know, we, we go to the state of the city message and, you know, everything's great. Yes, we can. And then two weeks later, well, we have a, God knows how big the budget deficit is. Is it 30 million? Is it 50 million? I still can't figure it out. You can't get a straight answer of actually what we're looking at. Um, but we should be, you know, lobbying uh, the state for additional aid. Um, I think the residents of Yonkers should contact uh, their members of the city council because at this point it's beyond the mayor. He's basically, you know, uh, delegated his responsibility and authority um, and leadership to the city council. So it's up to those city council people um, to actually modify the budget. To I hope they go through each one of these departments, including the fire department, and ask the tough questions. Uh, I'm 100% confident that the fire department will, if, if examined, will be shown to be a very efficient department. There's hardly any uh, fat on the bones of the fire department. And people fail to realize, and some of our new city council people, um, it's about for us to, to educate them, is that the fire department had severe cuts, you know, within the last decade. And, many, and the same thing with the police department. So times have been tough for many years now. 
if there was anything extra that wasn't really uh, a must have, it would have been cut already. You know, they've had efficiency experts come in and look at the city. They've had a, people come in and look at the overtime expenditures. They've had the controller come in. Like, we all know what the issues are. It's basically a lack of staffing, which creates the uncertainty in the overtime, which is then blamed for the deficit. And most recently, we had the contracts were settled. You know, the mayor's name is on every one of those contracts. He signed the contracts. We negotiated contracts in good faith. The firefighters, we, we made numerous concessions that saved the city millions of dollars in reductions of, of starting salary, changes to sick leave policies. Um, we, we made other concessions in those contracts and took very minimal uh, increases for the first, you know, for the first six or seven years of that contract. But, with, with, but it was a contract and it was supposed to bring stability and had the city planned for the contract because, you know, if there is no labor contracts, and let's face it, in government we don't make clothespins or cars. We provide services. Services are provided by people. Most of those people happen to be employees. So it's not a shock to anybody that 80% of a city's budget is for employees. We provide services, and the employees have a contract. And once you have contracts, there's certainty. You know what your expenses are going to be. So it's totally disingenuous here now, three years after we signed contracts, to say that, well, we didn't, we didn't know it was going to be, the budget was going to be this bad. My third grader could have figured out the math. Yep. That's the problem. So it's, imp it's bad management uh, on the part of the city, and not just the mayor. We had a city council who was sitting there for the last four years as well. That where was the planning? And now we're supposed to turn around and say, well, we have no money. We have to lay you people off. We have to demote you. It's totally unfair. Um, and the people should be outraged, yep. actually. And they should call their city council people. So a lot of those uh, new uh, firemen that just got hired and police officers will be laid off if this is to happen. Yes. You know, the mayor uh, went to great lengths of taking credit for the most diverse group of firefighters ever hired in the history of the city of Yonkers. Well, I'm wondering if he'll be proclaiming that he's laid off the most diverse group of firefighters that ever were hired in the city of Yonkers and demoted some of the, uh, the, the greatest percentage of minority fire officers that we have. Because many of the people who would be demoted are of color or of or Hispanics. So it's unfortunate, you know, where's the African American Advisory Board? They haven't come and spoke to me. Where's our Hispanic Advisory Board? We have all these advisory boards. I don't know who they're advising. But you know what? Someone should sit down, roll their sleeves up, and try to figure out our problems and, instead of just trying a political, political posturing. Because that's all what happens here. Total mismanagement, no planning, and then they throw their hands up in the air and blame everybody else. It's Governor Cuomo's fault. It's, Andy, it's, it's Shelley Mayer's fault. It's Andrew Stewart Cousins' fault. I'm surprised they haven't started blaming the Russians <laughs> because it's everybody else's fault. Okay. So to end this interview, uh, Barry, if this is to to happen, when will it take effect? Well, it's my understanding the, uh, the City Council will be holding hearings. They'll have a department hearings where they'll examine each department budget. Then they'll have two public hearings, um, all prior to June 1st. Technically, we're supposed to have a budget in place by June 1st um, because the fiscal year below begins July 1st. So if we were to file the letter of the law, um, it would be July 1st. Thank and that's you. assuming the controller's office approves the budget. You know, the budget has to, we have oversight from the controller's office under the Fiscal Authority Act from 1976, I believe, and also with the IME, um, the IMA that was agreed to with the school, the consolidation of the schools in the city a couple of years ago. We also have uh, Department of Financial Services, or the budget department for the state has to sign off on it, as well as the Department of Education. So those, those are a couple of steps that could delay the process. So it's in the city council's best interest to make these decisions prior to June 1st so that we can send the budget up to Albany and have it approved so it can be implemented by July 1st. Thank so there's not much time. There is not much time. It's only a few months, a couple months. It's weeks at this point. We're, yeah. we're almost in the beginning of May. Exactly. Well, on this note, guys, we end. Yonkers Voice is always reporting news that it's important to you. Stay tuned for more. Barry, thank you very much. My pleasure. Peace out.